I'm back from vacation, everyone, as the family and I took a trip up to Northern Europe over the last two weeks. It was an incredible trip, and but I'm good to be back. I'm a little jet lag, but yes, the big story this morning is Tropical Storm Barrel, which came ashore this morning around 4 o'clock in the morning in and around the Matagory Bay area towards Bay City down towards Houston that had some very heavy rain. In fact, some of these areas had picked up almost a foot of rain in and around the Lake Jackson region. That continues to be a tropical storm this morning as a 70 mile per hour tropical storm. The highest wind gusts were reported at 94 miles an hour in and around the Freeport region. And they're looking at some extensive power outages across that region as a formidable storm continues to push northbound around 12 miles an hour and you can actually see some of the power outages over 2 million customers now without power down there in southeast texas as they're taking the full brunt of the 80 mile per hour hurricane that came ashore around four o'clock this morning now it is downgraded to a tropical storm it's going to continue to weaken but the main culprit is going to be the flash flooding and unfortunately tornadoes out in east texas especially as we get into later on this afternoon. You can see the path where it came ashore down there towards uh, the Matagora Bay area and towards Bay City. That's the, that's the circulation that literally went right over Rosenberg, the Katy region, and it continues to lift northbound around 12 miles an hour and the outer bands is it spreading as far north as the College Station area. They're actually even getting some extreme outer bands in and around the Dallas Fort Worth region, but we've got numerous flood watches in place for Southeast and East Texas, where they're literally gonna be picking up anywhere from four to 10 inches. Some of these areas have picked up a foot of rain, and you can see some tornado warnings, unfortunately unfolding, which is pretty prevalent known for tropical systems, especially inland, and we do have an elevated risk later on this afternoon for tornadoes. In fact, we have a 10% probability of seeing a tornado or two within the region of Lufkin, out towards uh, the Longview region and towards the Shreveport region, all the way up to Texarkana. This is far eastern portions of Texas, of course, southeast Texas, as the circulation continues to move, move ashore. It will be continuing to weaken, but there's a lot of mid-level dry air, and that's the culprit of some of those tornadic spin-ups that could unfold, and we're already seeing several of them. I know we had a tornado warning towards the Galveston region earlier on this morning, but that's gonna be a known prevalent fact, unfortunately, you're gonna to have to be dealing with. Uh, so be on high alert as this area will be under the gun for some quick spin up tornadoes and under that torrential, just very heavy tropical rains. And the wind gusts are still gonna be up there. I mean, we do have a formidable tropical storm still around 70 miles an hour, and we could still see some 60 to 70 mile per hour. This is what, five, six hours? as I'm recording this video after it made landfall around four o'clock this morning, but East Texas and some of these power outages will, con will continue to unfortunately inundate areas of East Texas with some 40, 50, 60 mile power wind gusts as the winds will continue to slowly weaken, but it's still gonna be formidable as it continues to look to be a tropical storm, even towards you know, in, to, in and around the, the Lufkin, out towards Longview, out towards the Texarkana region. And it's been the culprit. I mean, here you can look at the bigger anomalies and what we're looking at here. I mean, it's just been extreme excessive heat for a good part of the West Coast. I can't tell you how many records are continued to be crushed and some all time records. In fact, Vegas hit 100 and 20 degrees yesterday that shattered the all-time record of 117 by three degrees folks but the middle of the country and the main culprit while this storm a barrel steered off to the northeast was this weakness in the ridge and the little bit of a cooler anomalies that came in from the northwest that's going to be that was the steering mechanism that ultimately picked up barrel because eventually before that it was looking to you know make landfall somewhere around mexico but the weakness and ridge did in fact win out on the storm which made the texas landfall and that's going to continue to be the steering mechanism over this storm for the next 
several days as this high pressure will continue to deepen and expand and eventually shift a little bit further east and as it does that's going to help push and steer barrel off to the northeast as well so you can see the rain amounts over the next couple of days from the national weather service yes those darker shaded reds yes that's those those two four six some areas of eight inches of rain say around the tyler region uh, the Longview region out towards Texarkana, you get up here to Little Rock, you could see some extensive flooding and you can see the trend, although it is will be weakening, inland flooding is gonna be a huge concern with this system as it continues to lift through Arkansas tomorrow, heading up through Missouri and eventually head up to Illinois and Indiana. And some of the remnants might spread as we get into Wednesday and especially into Thursday up here into Ohio, Pennsylvania, back into upstate New York. And eventually, yes, even getting into Vermont and New Hampshire and back into Maine because the culprit is just going to be this ridge of high pressure that's been pretty dominant out west will only expand and deepen as we get deeper and further into the week. And again, that is going to be the steering mechanism going into tomorrow on Tuesday with the area of low pressure somewhere in the vicinity of portions of Illinois as this will continue to lift off to the Northwest and likely be a tropical depression by then. So here's where we stand right now with Tropical Storm Barrel as I'm recording this update. 10, 10 o'clock in the morning has been now downgraded to a tropical storm of 70 miles an hour. We're already seeing the north northeastward shift, and that will continue to be prevalent as we head into tomorrow. By, by tomorrow morning, it's going to be in and around the Little Rock region, and this will continue to lift north-northeast and eventually get somewhere in the vicinity of, of Indiana by Wednesday and eventually heading into Thursday, it's somewhere in the vicinity that would be New York and spreading the rains into the Northeast. So if we break it down for on Wednesday, as the circulation will be moving out, so you got the ridge of high pressure will continue to expand and deepen out west with those record breaking temperatures slowly inching eastbound and that will shut off the taps and be dry back behind with sinking air back behind this system and then where the obviously where the low pressure is that's where we're going to be still dealing with some inland flooding rains likely not severe and likely we won't have to deal with tornadoes by then but we will be having to deal with some heavier rains and some flood watches in effect with some one to three inch totals across this region through Wednesday. But look at the look at the track, folks. This has been a very, very unusual storm, especially for so early on in the season. We've been tracking barrel for the last two weeks <laughs> as, as I've been on vacation. It started off as just kind of a tropical wave out to actually down here into the Cape Verde Islands which is again rare you typically have a lot of african dust this early on to, for a storm to survive the track all the way through is just very rare in fact we've got numerous records obviously broke out earliest cat four on record earliest cat five five on record bumped up to 165 miles an hour and again it continued to shift doubt just scraping the outskirts of jamaica as a formidable category four hurricane and then it moved ashore and around the yucatan as another hurricane with the second landfall and then of course we had the third landfall this morning around matagor matagor bay region around an 80 mile per hour hurricane and that circulation continues to shift northeast over the next couple of days likely will just be a low level center by then but still dumping heavier rains through ohio and eventually toronto and that's those rains will spread into the northeast by thursday so you can see the dryness back behind this system as the low pressure system move out we do have some sinking air back behind the system as the formidable range although it won't be as heavy or as intense but still dealing with a nuisance of very heavy rain across this region heading into your Thursday afternoon, Thursday night. And if we expand the view going in back into the tropics, once barrel kind of moves out, there's pretty much quiet. I mean, we've already had uh, Chris uh, as basically just only lasted less than 24 hours. So we've had three named storms so far this, this tropical season. And of course, there'll be plenty more. It's just we're going to take a little bit of a respite as most of the Atlantic turns to be quiet 
over the coming week or so and the ridge will be a lot more prevalent across a good part of the u.s so eventually as this ridge will start to expand and deepen even further a nine five ninety seven ridge of high pressure over the desert southwest will likely spread into the central u.s knocking down those you know 80 degree temperatures and likely what you're experiencing today be replaced with widespread 90s and if not some triple digits trying to come back for the weekend and yeah there's your temperature anomalies it's really just the outskirts the the coastal areas that that have you know taken advantage of all the warm waters out here into the atlantic and you kind of get like some sea breeze action that's where you're starting to get some elevated rain showers across virginia back into the carolinas and far deep south texas but that's the only really game in town as you can see where the precipitation will be as we head into the weekend for your Saturday as much of the story will start to unfold with the ridge of high pressure just being so dominant as we head into the weekend we're going into you know getting into the start of peak summer you know typically that starts around middle of July and going all the way through August of course that's your hottest time of the year in the U in, in the US and so you're already seeing your averages and likely at your highest, which you typically get for the entire year. And of course, you're seeing temperature anomalies above that. So you know it's going to be hot for a good part of the U.S. And by Sunday, we'll have some weakness again into the ridge of high pressure, especially along the coastal regions. So the areas that likely will get some precipitation by then will be the extreme portions of the east coast through south carolina through north carolina back into virginia as well as into delaware those areas into massachusetts getting into new jersey up here towards connecticut into vermont new hampshire portions of eastern pennsylvania we'll be dealing with some showers and thunderstorms by then so it's good to be back guys I'll be back tomorrow with another full update. So I appreciate you guys uh, following. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you ch catch me at the next update. Why I protect you before and after storm.